quantum mathematics to tell you that maybe the market's getting weaker? What do you think? No, I do this all the time. I always short these kind of signals. Always, a sh shooting star. You want to give it a name. Why? Because the emotion of the market is starting to find that the bulls are getting tired and it's closing near the lows of the day. And the truth is, there's probably something going on that I don't know about yet because I'm at the bottom of the food chain. There's nothing better than shorting a signal like that and two hours later a news report comes out and says some company didn't get their FDA approval. It happens all the time. Stock tells a story long before the media can. And the truth is, people higher up in the food chain, guess what? Probably had that information before you did. Institutions probably had that in information before you, you did. Or maybe it's just as simple as Goldman Sachs has a $2 million sell order in a stock that only trades a half million shares a day and they're starting to distribute their shares. But you're not going to see in the news. But I don't care. Goldman just showed me his hand and he didn't know he showed me his hand. So we don't need certainty. We don't need headlines that tell us why. Fundamentalists need to know why. Good traders just want to know when. That's what we want. We want when. We don't care about why. We'll get why later. And that's what a stochastic's doing. It's measuring the emotional range shifting control. It's measuring the bulls getting tired. The bears are starting to get control. And even though the stock still trades higher, do you think that a stock could trade higher but only marginally and still be a bearish signal? What do you think? Absolutely. That's like coming out of a stupor, being drunk. So you ever, you ever go, go, go home drunk and wake up the next morning you're still a little drunk? Okay. How many here have ever done that? I'll admit it. I did it. Okay. Yeah, you wake up, you're still, hey, I'm still a little drunk. Kind of feels good. By 10, you're leaving work and you're sleeping. Okay. So we look for that kind of, that kind of hangover in the market. I'm just trying to make this human for you, okay? <laughs> and I try to do things that I can relate to. I actually don't drink that much anymore, but the point is, is that that's what's happening. And the same thing is true, by the way, when we get into oversold. Guess what's happening? In a downtrend, as the close starts to happen near what? The high end of the range, a hammer, the market is starting to show you, even though the market closed bearish, even though the market closed down for the day, it's a bullish sign. And it's the best way to help confirm as well, are we in stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four? You throw some volume into that, that, that algorithm and you measure what the market's doing. I love to buy capitulation when the average range is starting to close near its highs of the day, even if it's down. I want to buy that pain. And if I can do that, I can make money. And that's how we consistently do it. And we consistently make money. Now what we did is we took it a little bit further. We said, okay, let's average out some of these things. And here's what we learned over a lot of time. And no one's ever taught you stochastics like this before, I'll guarantee it. Because most people see it too literally. But here's a little trick that will help you make money. Run this out on a daily chart. I use a 14-day parameter. And here's my little trick. When the K, which by the way in this case is the red, crosses the D in any zone, by the way, and they both leave the zone. And by the way, you might say, well, what are the exit zones? Well, I'm showing 80 and 20 here because that's the tradition. You know, when, when you get to an 80-yard line in the bullish part of the football field, they say, that's what, overbought. And if you go to the other side of the football field, you get to the 20-yard line. Because we're just measuring this thing 0 to 100. That's the football field. You're oversold. Well, what I want to tell you is that every stock has its own personality, and sometimes the overbought and oversold zones are more like 90-10, 95-5, right? Because it's based on that stock. Some stocks have a greater range of emotion than other stocks. Microsoft is going to look differently than Taser, right? So don't be literal. Don't say 80-20, 80-20. No, because overbought might be 95 on Taser and oversold might be 5. And all you got to do is pull up a daily chart and you look at prices and when they turned and look at the stochastic and you'll know where those end zones are. It's really easy, really simple, embarrassingly simple. Now, here's the little trick though that we learned and that we've, that we've back tested. When the percentage K actually crosses the percentage D, so in other words, where the K, the red, crosses the blue, 
what that's telling you is that the emotional state is heightening because K is the fast line and D is the slower line. K is like price, it moves the quickest, and D is like the 10 day moving average, it moves a little slower. So what we're seeing is we're seeing K wakes up the fastest and D, the, the blue, follows behind because it's smoothed out with time. It's the freighter, it's not the speedboat. So when that happens, when the K actually crosses the D, that's like prices breaking up through all their moving averages. That's like a big price rally after things got all sold. It's like when the market was just trading down hard and all the moving averages are straight down, and all of a sudden one day prices blows out, breaks out, prices above all its moving averages. That's the same thing here, same principles. The simplicity is its greatest disguise. And when that happens, when the K exits the oversold zone above the D, you gotta buy them. You're early stage two. You're right there. And if you're not, and if you're wrong, I'm gonna show you how to place your stops because no one's always right. You'll be out quick, following the simple rule of what? Cut your losses fast and let your, let your winners run. And this is the little, but just remember, the K will lead the way. And so, and that works the same way, by the way, for overbought. The K crosses the blue, which gets my attention, but when they both exit the traditional overbought zone, depending on what stock you're looking for, what you'll easily be able to measure when you look at any given stock, just look at a, histor a historical daily chart, like put up 200 days of Taser, and you'll see that overbought's around 95. You can't miss it. You say, hey, that's where prices seems to drop, right around 95. So every stock's different because of its risk, because of its beta. But the net of it is, is that the sell signals, when K crosses D and they both leave the overbought zone, it's a sell signal. And it's an early signal. Now it's not perfect. It's, just, it's not gonna pick the perfect top. But I remember I said, this is stage three and we really do best doing what in stage three? Standing aside. Yeah, just, just not being in the market, right? Because the odds aren't there. And you get a lot of false signals here where the market just might go sideways and whipsaw you to death. Here's another cliche. From false moves come fast moves. Also very true, why? Because the false moves are what suck people in. And the market makers kind of feel that, they know that. Because they get the order flow. So stage one and three is not where you want to play. It's like betting seven at craps. Actually, if you bet seven at craps, you're, you're smarter better, by the way, in the game of craps. Because you're betting the casino's game. They don't like that. Don't look at the girls, don't drink, they don't like that at all. <laughs> so. That's for the guys, right? But that's true, okay? So this sell signal is gonna be an early sell signal, but not perfect, doesn't need to be. Lots of room, lots of juice left in this orange. You don't have to squeeze all the juice out of the orange to make money in the stock market. And certainly not to beat the S&P 500. And our models just consistently show this on, this is a weekly chart of the Dow. It's undeniable. So when we run our stochastics up against our stage analysis with moving average clusters and volume, we constantly find breakout patterns. And there's just one trade after the next that we find that we make money on. I want to show you our system at work before we run out of time. But basically, the stochastic gives us these signals early on. There's many kinds of bullish and bearish divergences. Uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on those now because I think the point's been made. But just one quick example of what a bullish divergence is on the stochastic, it's a pretty simple thing because you can look at this thing all on your own. Um, when a market is making a lower low, which is classic what? It's classic downtrend, right? But the stochastic is making what? A higher low, that's a beautiful bullish divergence. Because what it's saying is that the emotional bearish range, the bad tempered stock isn't so mad anymore. It's still angry, but it's not as angry as it was. It doesn't get as angry as it used to. That's kind of the way I look at it. So when K breaks out above D, and it makes a higher low than the prior, even though the stock's making a lower low, that's telling me that the late participants in the market, the losers, are still selling their fear, and because they're so classically late, 80%, they're so good at being wrong, that they're the last ones out, and you want to buy that. So that's a bullish divergence. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, it's pretty simple. How many here believe that the, the logic behind that's pretty simple? You can understand it. That's the stock market. Don't think that big money is smart money. Don't think that you can't do it. You can do it. You absolutely can do this. And the market makers, the specialists, and the fund managers, they just don't want you to believe it. They don't want you to sell your mutual funds and go do this on your own. They want your money, they want your fees, they want your order flow, they want your commissions. And you can blow away the S&Ps. And guess what else? The, the mutual funds are shameless bulls. They only can make money in stage two. The SEC sees to it that they can't even short. Less than one-tenth of one percent of mutual funds is allowed to short. So they can only make money if the market goes up. I mean, if you took a fund manager, if this guy here is a fund manager, and I took a machete and I carved open his chest cavity, a couple horns would pop out, okay? <laughs> They're bulls, they can only be bulls, that's all they are. We're not just bulls, we are what the market tells us to be. And whether we make money on stage two uptrends or stage four downtrends, we can make money in both markets, which makes us very dangerous in terms of being able to blow away the S&P 500, which is what everybody in this room should be shooting for and making money. And you